Okay. Hello again. This is Scott Harden, AJ4VD, and I am going to demonstrate how to take the stitched QRSS image that we generated earlier and further anal analyze it using the VD stacker that I wrote to hopefully extract more data than we could just by looking at our eyes. When we open the program, the first thing we want to do is load the stitched image. So we'll navigate to where the stitched image is. Don't be tempted to include the original captures or even uh, some of these individual cropped images. It has to be the original stitched image. So I will open it, and when I do, it pops open two windows. This is the original image, the stitched image, and this is a good way to view it if you don't want to use the Windows file viewer. Minimize that. And this is the stacked image. Now I'll talk more about this in a moment. Let's work with the original image. We have to determine something. Let's say that we want to figure out what this call sign is. We want to overlap it in such a way that we um, stack the call sign on top of itself. Because it sends the same call sign over and over, if we can stack it on top of itself over and over, it should become more and more clear. So I'm going to scan briefly through the call sign and try to find a clear region. And this call sign is pretty difficult. Here's a hint. We see dot dash dash, which is a J. Oops. And then I see a W here. Okay, so there's a J, J. I've got that. And then it kind of disappears. Okay, here's a JJ again. So I want to determine how far it is from one JJ to another JJ. I will use the very tail end, how about the bottom tail end of the second J. I'll click here once. And notice this bar changes as I move. When I click here, my last click, it saved the values for. So when I go, I'll find that other J that we identified, which is really clear. I'll click in the same point. Actually, I won't click. Correction. <laughs> I won't click. I will just look at this difference value as I hover near it. And the difference is 1597 and 6. 1597 and 6. So horizontally, it's changed 1597 pixels. And vertically, it's dropped down 6 pixels. It's easy to see why it dropped horizontally. Why it moved horizontally, but it dropped down because you can see the downward tilt of the capture. That's evidently a result of my radio heating up as I record image. So, which I say it was about 1596 and 6. So I will minimize that and change it to 1596. No, not there. Uh, that's 6. This is 1596 right here. 1596 and 6. So that moved it horizontally and vertically pretty close to where it needs to go. I can fine tune it by hitting these left and right arrows. And you can see every time I do it, the uh, image is stacked one on top of each other and you can kind of see how it's changing. Now I want to match this blurriness. I want to get it sharp. And right now it's not completely sharp for a couple of reasons. Um, right now we're only looking at the first three slices out of five potential slices. When each image this size is overlapped from that extremely large image, we have five images being stacked. However, I'm limiting it down to three for this example, but I can take it up to five, and it gets more clear if it were lined up, but in our case it gets blurry. So I'll do the initial alignment with only two or three images. And I will move this left and right until it's pretty close. And then I'll do my fine tuning with the upper images. So the last one will be five. I'll try to align four and five and see what happens. I think we're almost there. Okay. Try to align it better vertically and horizontally. Now I may have gotten something wrong here. Yeah, I think I got the numbers wrong. There we go. Look at that. See how that became clear all of a sudden? I'll fine tune it this way. And fine tune this. I 
Those last values take a little bit of time to fine tune, but when you get them right, they look good. And there is our final image. Look how clear that is. That's impressive. There's a, a clear D, J, J, W, A, 5. So it's W, A, 5, D, J, J. And uh, one of the problems that we see is that it doesn't start with the W. It starts halfway through the call sign. Well, I can adjust that by changing my offset. My offset just rolls the image horizontally. And if I set it as 100, you can see it changes. You can find a value that makes it start where you want it to start. But for this demonstration, it's not really relevant. Uh, when you average a bunch of images together, you have the potential to lose contrast. So by clicking Auto Contrast, it can help increase the contrast a little bit. Notice what averaging did to the red bars. And uh, it made them a little bit transparent. And it also angled them because you know they, they didn't overlap perfectly. I guess those are the 3 or 10 second marks. Anyway, that's a good final image. Another thing to talk about is... I'll go back to looking at only two images or one image. I can take this off and it will just average everything. Now, like I said a bunch of times, it's averaging all of these stacked images to produce this value. But that might not be the best way to do it. If I have a signal for a little bit, like a signal that's coming in and going out and coming in and going out, averaging isn't really the best thing to do. I want to only keep the strongest signals. In that case, I can select maximum here. This isn't good if you have a lot of interference, but if you have a somewhat low noise floor and a signal that comes in and out, it will help remove the spaces where the signal goes away. So if I click maximum and I'll remove the auto contrast, I'll put it back. That's another way to do it. So once again, maximum is good if you have a signal that's coming in and going out, and average is good if you have a signal that's constantly there but extremely weak. So I hope you... Oh, we almost forgot something. Um, Another thing that we can do is stack the image vertically. And that's a little bit more useful if you have an extremely narrow capture. If I were to only save an image from here to here and have a very wide but extremely short image, this would make a lot more sense when it comes to aligning the image. But you can see stacking the image lets you see all of that. And at any point, I can click Save Output, and it will just save this image exactly as it looks. I'll take off the stack, click Save Output, and we'll see it puts it in a folder. Let's see, it puts it in the Stitch folder, which is where I got the original image here. It makes a new small folder called Stacked, and that's where it puts the image. So this is my image that we just created using the stacking method. And lucky for you, it keeps all the information. We use the average projection, t projection technique. We averaged five images, and the horizontal repeat is this many pixels, and the vertical drift for each stack is that pi many pixels. So I hope you found this software useful. Uh, every time you exit the software, it checks for updates. So if there's anything that comes out, you'll know about it. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Or you can always go to my website, swharden.com, and look for more software there. 73, and good luck with your QRSS captures.